You know, it kind of feels like once you announce or you are proclaimed to be a Minecraft YouTuber, your reputation is doomed to slowly be snuffed out and allegations about things you've done are very soon to follow. Thing is, if someone was just outed on Twitter and you saw the line Minecraft content creator, for some reason your brain immediately goes to not again. That there is some sense of normality in that. It's very weird. Think of Roblox. If a Roblox content creator was outed, you'd probably not think it was as normal as a Minecraft YouTuber being outed. It just seems like either Minecraft attracts the worst of people, or the Minecraft community is being looked under by a thousand times microscope. And people are quick to cancel other people because Minecraft is a wholesome game and everyone's meant to be wholesome that makes content about it, right? Or some people just hate Minecraft YouTubers because some of them are cringy apparently. Because a lot of them appeal to kids. But it's very weird to think a game like Minecraft would have an infamous reputation for content creators. Huh? And I can almost assure you in the next three months, another Minecraft YouTuber will be outed. And just as I start editing this video, allegations about George Not Found come out, and some of the people I speak about are associated with George Not Found, so this is before the allegations came out. But it's bizarre how we got to this point. Minecraft is a monolith in the gaming community, and gaming history in general. But the reputation of the content creators surrounding it doesn't affect it at all. In fact, it's probably the most nostalgic and enjoyable game from the music to the game. Yo, yo, yo. Ah! And the game never really gets old, it runs off your imagination. Unless your imagination is constantly making phallic shapes, then yeah, it probably gets boring after a while. But even then, if you do get bored, you can add so many mods to your Minecraft game that your PC sounds like an A10 warthog next time it starts up Minecraft. However, my problem with Minecraft is that I have no imagination whatsoever. I like my games like I like my extracurricular activities, which involves my testicles being clamped and electrocuted because I like a challenge. But I'm too much of a pussy to download Dark Souls. But vanilla Minecraft, I will blitzkrieg trying to get all the bosses killed and get all the best weapons and then just forget about it. Whilst my friends have made legendary castles and my house is a mud hut with an unorganised chest. So I end up downloading mods that make the game extremely hard. It's not the way Minecraft was meant to be played, but it's an honest day's work. But anyway, Minecraft is not really responsible for all these YouTubers and content creators being exposed. But it has acquired the stereotype for the people that make content on it to either be creeps or just really cringy. But it's unfortunate that a wholesome game is a breeding ground for allegations, false allegations, and apparent cringiness. But let's have a look at some of the cases and see if we can unpickle the question that is, why is most of the content creator community on Minecraft perceived to be so bad? First we have the most recent of events, Wilbur Sup, not really a Minecraft influencer, but he helped write the Dream SMP script and took part in it. The Dream SMP that had a high reputation and then slowly divulged into chaos when allegations about some of the members came out and a small percentage of the fans who were still spam cells becoming a bit too diehard and obsessed with some of the content creators and the SMP in general, which led to the fandom to be perceived as cringy. Which I've said previously before in another video that once a fandom gets that big, it starts to become like that anyway. But Wilbur was a prominent member of the SMP and was also known for his music and his other YouTube channel, Soot House, which confused me very much because I was a fan of the Soot House videos and didn't even know he was that person on the Dream SMP. Now for the allegations that were made like a few weeks ago, the allegations surrounded a previous girlfriend and forms of abuse, such as he would bite her and press on bruises even though she would tell him to stop. And this unfortunately opened Pandora's box, because not only did this come out as he just released his latest project, but many people and influencers would speak about the same thing that had happened to them. And many of their supporters did some digging on old videos of Wilbur, finding anything that could relate to these situations and chalk it up as evidence. Now, looking at some of the clips, yeah, there are some that do speak volumes, such as him trying to bite Tommy in it publicly, but there are some others that do kind of make sense why people would think that, but some are just skits, but many people are taking it at face value and stretching their grandma's labia, trying to fit the situation. And to play devil's advocate, no, I'm not going to start supporting Wilbur before you say anything. Put the gun down. Wilbur says he was a bad boyfriend in his response, but that the biting was completely consensual with this girl, and that there are text messages to prove this. He just 
didn't release the text messages. But then he goes on to say he is going to therapy and he has changed. Just a little side note, why does every YouTuber or Twitch streamer immediately say they've been to therapy after a big drama? Like, I've never been to therapy, but there is no way you could just turn up for one session and it's immediately a 100% win rate to change in your life to the point where you can claim you've changed and improved completely and that the allegations made against you don't really matter anymore because you've changed. And a majority of the time these influencers don't know they should go to therapy until a mob tells them they're in the wrong. Not beforehand when they were doing these activities, but when they get shit online they assume, ah, oh, now I have to go to therapy now, now that the community has said I'm bad. It's just very weird to me. But there was no further input from Wilbur except for this response. A seemingly dog feces response, but anyway. But the entire Minecraft community had just somewhat turned against him. And rightfully so. Before everyone perceived him as this well-talented and funny guy, now they're perceiving him as this somewhat complete monster behind closed doors. And all of his SMP friends and people he's met IRL have turned against him. And I don't mean that in a way like, oh, fuck, he's got exposed, we have to be on the right side. Some people knew about his tendencies to do these sort of things and spoke to him about it, and they are just now finding it fell on deaf ears. There is only one problem I have with this controversy, and it just rubs me the wrong way. Like someone has mixed up the moisturizer with Vic's vapor rub, and now my cock is on fire. <coughs> and it's a small amount of people saying that even if, you know, it was consensual biting, the biting is still weird. And I'm not talking biting where, you know, you're ripping out the flesh, just like little nibbles. And there was one video I was watching specifically that has been removed now, I don't know why. And their opinion was that even if it was consensual, even if they weren't big bites, it, it was on the same akin as cannibalism. Yeah. And people should be mad at him even if it was consensual. And I think quite a lot of other people shared the same opinion. Like, I'm not into this, but as long as you're not taking big chunks and it's all consensual, there is nothing wrong with biting the person you're in a relationship with. I don't know. Am I weird? Maybe I'm a bit weird. But the main problem was that he was abusing his ex-girlfriend and biting her and pressing on the bruises without her consent. And then also proceeded to bite his own friends, sometimes in public, without consent. But wrapping this up, I think there is still a lot to be said about this situation. And one thing I've learned from the internet is to never take a side because even though Wilbur has the evidence stacked against him, and yes, go support the victim, sometimes you could be completely wrong because you don't know the entire situation, just like with what happened with Dream. Now the allegations made against Dream I think was the gunpowder added to the campfire in regards to the reputation of YouTube content creators that play Minecraft having the stereotype of being predators. Because this story when it broke was plastered all over the internet for months and his reputation was ran through harder than your mother on a Friday night and even now his reputation is still ruined. To the point where even if you show people evidence that this really didn't happen, they will say something on the lines of, I don't care, I still hate him, and I'm still going to call him a predator. Probably because either it's a kid, or because his Minecraft content could be viewed as cringe from this person, so they have a genuine distaste for Dream and just want to see his downfall. But now onto the allegations that were made against him, it couldn't have been more worse of a time to do it. I'm talking doggy style whilst your wife is in labour, and on her third contraction. Because this was immediately after he just did a face reveal, and everyone was sending a bukkake of hate towards Dream. So to say this was insult to injury is an understatement. Now there is no correlation in the events I just described, but Dream was having the worst year of his life on top of constant swattings and now being called a predator. All because a girl you barely spoke to and you was very cordial with decided to make shit up about you. And absolutely nobody waited for Dream's official response or even tried to verify that these screenshots or messages that this person supposedly had were valid. And this was made increasingly worse when Dream got on Twitter. Now, if somebody made false allegations against you and your entire reputation was ruined and everyone hated you, you would want people to know your truth. Because it would be very frustrating to have all this thrown against you with no evidence to back it up whatsoever that is actually true. So with frustration in mind, Dream took to Twitter multiple times to basically have a vent or breakdown towards people that were sending him hateful comments without them truly knowing what was happening. And this is something he admits he should have stayed off Twitter and just made this video or went down the legal avenues. Because going on Twitter without a plan is always a bad idea. 
and some of his unguided statements made people discredit him more, or just not believe him, to the point where he was physically assaulted by Gumball, and people were entirely on Gumball's side, just because they hated Dream. But as I said before, you should never really pick a side till both sides have spoken on an official statement. And this leads to Dream's magnum opus of all response videos, right next to Quite's on the shelf, because the girl that accused him made fake police reports and basically told everyone that she went to the police when she didn't. And it was found out that some of the messages were either out of context or completely imaginary. And arguably the best part of the video is that he proves that any piece of media or any stray text can be used against you, even if it's completely doctored or not real at all. And to prove his point, he used XQC and Pokemon, with the XQC text being the most questionable thing I have ever read. <laughs> but watching the video having the single cell brain I have, I did believe it for a second. But despite somewhat clearing his name, people still have a hate burn over him, and disregarded all the evidence that he had shown, and still want to call him a groomer or a predator. And unfortunately this situation is one of the big reasons the stereotype about Minecraft YouTubers has gained traction over the years. And why your brain immediately admits that anything involving a Minecraft YouTuber and a Predator you immediately think is true. Because he was the biggest Minecraft YouTuber that didn't deserve any of the flack people were giving him. And still to this day receives hate for no reason whatsoever except people don't like him. Which leads on to my next story. Jellybean, a name that probably just sent shivers down your spine. <coughs> a person who most people think could be used as a torture technique by the FBI on the same lines as waterboarding. Or at least they used to think so. Because the hate for Jellybean has significantly died down over the years. However, in the past they were viewed as the most cringiest Minecraft YouTuber. Now, not gonna lie, I think if you gave a 17 year old a microphone and Minecraft gameplay in the background, it's probably gonna be a tiny bit cringe. Oh! Just killed a woman. Feeling good. In my opinion, they were on the same lines as Tommy in it, just people hated them a lot more for some reason. I think they were a lot more expressive and a lot louder. Diapers. <laughs> Balls. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. Just like. Hi, hey, mom. Can we get McDonald's? And just very obnoxious looking back at those videos. <laughs> but once again, they were 17 years old. I think I was on the same level at that age. Uh. 13. Uh, hello. HELLO! But you had every commentary channel imaginable dumping on them like they were a public urinal. And even a subreddit was made just for hating them. But they really didn't care about the hate at the start because they got their audience to terrorise YouTube by getting their fans to slap their YouTube profile picture on their own and comment it's not a mistake, it's a masterpiece under every YouTube video that was ever made, and I would not be surprised if a video of like a mother dying or a big car crash or a beheading video had one of those comments underneath them. Even I was affected by this, I think I got one comment but you know it's fine. But people were pissed that they were getting these comments under their videos, even though they instructed just for their fans to do it under their video eventually, but people still did it on other people's videos. And sort of in the commentary community, it just became popular just to hate on them. And eventually they got doxxed and more hate, which they didn't deserve. It was basically a pile on slowly suffocating them. But eventually the trend of hating on Jelly Bean eventually died down and they're doing pretty well for themselves. And they have calmed down quite a lot, I'd like to say. But looking at these cases, it's quite easy to see why people look at the Minecraft content creation community and see them as predators or just cringy. It is just a false fallacy, and the survivor bias comes into this quite a lot. Where you notice more the people that do do wrong than the people that don't do wrong. And yeah, Minecraft content creation isn't as it used to be. But the way we were entertained as kids is very different to what now kids are entertained by. But I love Minecraft, even though I don't know how to play it properly, and the community isn't so bad. Now we've reached that special time where I tell you to like and subscribe, but I've basically given up. Those buttons never glow, and it's because of my British accent and YouTube just hates me, but anyway, bye bye